Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 24th T Tuesday Update. Let's get into it. For the last several weeks, it's been all about writing this paper to send off to the Artificial Life Conference uh, uh, that's happening in the UK this summer. That paper has now shipped. Um, what I would like to do, I believe it's doable, by next week we should be build ready in the sense that all of the parts that need to be soldered together from the circuit board to the through hole parts to the surface mounts parts, we should have them all in hand. I need to get with the UNM folks to make sure we've set up the proper pipeline to get ETS paid for building them. But one week from today, I think we have a very good chance, I'm putting myself on the hook to say we should be at scheduling with ETS when these tiles are going to get built. Now that doesn't mean we're done with the hardware. We still have to get cases, we still have to get well, some more beagle bones and, and, and displays possibly down the road, depending on how many tiles we actually end up assembling with ETS. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, and we still have to make all the intertile connectors. I mean, these things, uh, this is a tiny little circuit board plus parts and assembly and 3D printing all has to be done as well so that we have plenty to do. But if we can get the tiles and manufacture, yay. All right. Today I'll have an update on 3D printing, an update on the bill of materials. Let's get into it. All right. So, um, if we remember where we were. Uh, for a while, and this is several revs into the case, I had managed to be printing them four at a time, uh, uh, but then I started getting these failures. Uh, in particular, when we were in the back left corner, uh, we started getting, yes, er, mint amp bed. And after going through all kinds of issues about dealing with that, the fix was, well, if the problem is occurring in the back corner, don't use the back corner. And I started doing three up and just skipping this thing. And that worked pretty well. I got a bunch more uh, done through it. I uh, also had this print fan error, another apparently completely separate problem. The wires go in a whole different place. Uh, that was fixed by saying, okay, don't check the fans, <laughs> see if they're working. Because they were still working. The fan check error means that the it, it thinks the fan isn't spinning. The fan definitely was spinning. So that got us working again. Uh, um, and uh, then here we are. All was nice uh, until it wasn't. Uh, uh, now, yeah, there it is. Er, Mintemp bed is back, and it's no longer in the corner, it's in the middle. Uh, this was the first one I got. Uh, uh, it was very close to the center. I just peeled up these layers and tr decided to try again, and I got another one. Now it's over in a corner. So now, really, we're, we're dead in the water until Er, Mintemp bed can be dealt with. It would be nice to deal with print fan error as well, but... Uh, uh, so, you know, we've been talking about this, so the, the, I did investigate the warranty situation on the pre-assembled Prusa Mark I3, Mark III printers, because that's what I have, the pre-assembled one. The whole point was I didn't want to have to learn how to do all this stuff. One year warranty for the rest of the world. The printer shipped to us last May, so that means we have at least until May of this year for warranty service. Uh, um, I had, you know, sent uh, mail. I, I had used, whoops, I had used the online. I can get this if I try. Here we go. I had gotten the, um, used the online send a note thing last couple of weeks. I'd sent a couple of notes, got nothing. Uh, um, the hypothesis was that uh, since this had been bought by the department for me, uh, the guy in the department had actually had the official account and I was the account I was using was not linked to this printer. So I got in touch with the guy at the at the uh, at the department and, and he said, well, you know, I, I can be him for purposes of talking to these things about warranty printer. So this is me. I, I got online with the chat thing uh, to say, you know, how do I arrange for a warranty service to get this thing working? <sighs> 
Uh, it actually didn't didn't take all that long to wait. They were warning me it might take a half an hour. It only took maybe ten or minutes, ten minutes or so. And I was talking to this Shane person, uh, uh, and they were and I saw it. I got the ermin temp bed, and they said, "Well, you got to find the wire, not the thick ones." And it's like, "Well, but but you know, I can't see any thick or thin wires. I see the bed. I see the big wrapped cable. That's it." And you know, I kind of knew the implication was was that I'm supposed to take the thing apart to take a look at the bottom of the bed. Or whatever it is like that but I didn't want to do that uh, I have no idea how to remove the bed nor and desire to do so is this how assembled printer warranty service works now you know okay I'm being kind of a dork in the sense that well in the sense that what in the sense that I, <laughs> like a product that I bought assembled that comes with a warranty I should just be able to say it's not working and they should say okay we'll fix it but that's not the way it works here I mean and and he says, no, no, that isn't the way it works. Yeah, we have to see what the issues are, and then we'll send you parts. And so then it's like, oh, and, and then I have to repair the printer myself. Uh, the warranty repair I have to do using the parts you sent me, and yes, indeed, that's the answer. Uh, um and, you know, again, I was really suspecting this was true, but I really don't want to do this. I don't even want to take the bed off because the last thing I want to do is have to figure out how to recalibrate all this stuff. That's why I bought an assembled printer. Well, one of the reasons why I bought an assembled printer. Yeah, you have to go through the steps. They they refer me to the instruction, the assembly manual, and I have to do step 14 uh, backwards, which it turns out means I have to actually start with step 16 and do that backwards, then step 15, then step 14, and then maybe I can observe whatever it is I'm supposed to observe uh, uh, and I said look you know what if I just want to ship it back to you guys and let you do it how does that work how much is it gonna cost me and I mean I really thought that was a reasonable question uh, um, but actually it, it's not well you you'd ship it back here and they'd look it over see if it's a warranty claim get the parts and so forth and how much would it cost couldn't tell me and like I said, last thing I want to do is learn how to recalibrate all this stuff myself. And now I'm being told that I just ha I ha I'm going to have to do a recalibration just to check if it's a warranty service because of a part. I'm going to take the bed off and put it back on and then mess around with it. Uh, um, and so forth. So <sighs> I never got a straight answer about how much it would cost. Uh, you know, and he, he kept saying, you know, I would have to pay for shipping. And I kept saying, yeah, I understand I would have to pay for shipping. Uh, but then what, you know, and, you know, and, and then I said, okay, well, finally, you know, do I need an RMA? Do I need one of these numbers? He couldn't tell me whether I need an RMA or not, because basically I was, you know, I'm acting as if a 3D printer a warrantied assembled 3D printer is like a regular consumer product. And Prusa and all of these guys, they don't want to treat it that way because really it's kind of not. It's kind of crazy and busting and you got to get into a relationship with your 3D printer to like it or not. And I have one. I just don't want to take it to the next level. So, uh, uh, um, you know... It, it, it was all crazy. And so finally, uh, the guy said that, you know, or the girl, I don't know, that um, they'll, they'll leave a message for the people when they come in. So the guy at the office at the department is probably going to get mail from them at some point. And I, I really am not sure how to, how to pursue, how to proceed on this. I suspect... I should probably take the bed off, remove these nine screws, remove these things, be careful not to do this, and so forth, uh, uh, because it might be possible that I could just find a, a, a piece of wire that I could solder or jump something and get back to work, uh, rather than worrying about actually trying to get them to send me something, but... I don't know. I really don't feel like I have that kind of time. Uh, uh, if there's any other way to pursue it, uh, I went back to the brain trust at the chat room and okay, you know, if I need to buy another 3D printer, uh, what do I need to buy? And I'm open to suggestions there. I've, I, uh, there was a Creality CR, I don't know, something or other. Uh, um, that I looked at, uh, and you know, way cheaper than the Prusa, less than half the cost. Uh, um, and, uh, I'm worried that the, uh, the accuracy is not going to be quite as good and I'm not going to be happy. I'm going to end up being all frustrated with that as well. Don't know. 
So, on the 3D printing situation, number one, we are dead in the water. We're not printing. Uh, uh, and number two, not entirely sure how to proceed. That's the state there. All right. On the bill of materials, uh, um, basically there's a couple of things that have been pending. Well, so let's just get into it. Uh, um, there was uh, this whole thing with the screws for connecting the beagle bone to the to the board through the standoffs, and also to connect the uh, perhaps to connect the, the the tile itself to some next level mounting where the tiles get grouped together. Uh, um, I got these cheese head screws from the Granger guys last week, and, and they had these kind of thick heads, uh, uh, which is you know was it was fine. I mean that's what the cheese head meant, so I kind of knew it. I only got these because they were the only ones that were listed in M3 five millimeter from the Granger guys, but really ended up thinking didn't didn't want the cheese head uh, um, and and so this was one of the ones that came with a little kit I got it's all nice and little roundy and the head itself is not that much bigger than the Phillips drive part of it which means you'd be more risking cam out and you'd be more risking a strip but this is not a place where I'm going to be loading it up anyway uh, um, and here's what they look like side by side. Here's the cheese head, and here's the ones noticeably lower. So I wanted to find some other options, and I found Bolt Depot in in, in Massachusetts. They had very smooth website. Uh, you could make orders of three dollars here, two dollars here. So I got a, a bag, a hundred bag, a hundred of all the three different types of M3 by 0.5. That's the the thread uh, times five millimeter screws. In, in zinc and, and the two kinds of stainless steel that they had and, and got it shipped for 14 bucks. Uh, um, very nice. Uh, um, and, and, and then here it was. Uh, uh, I have a soft spot in my, in my heart for Hingham, Massachusetts. It's on the south coast underneath Boston. My aunts used to live there. We used to go there, go through there in the summertime. I like Hingham. Uh, um, and you know, I also love how these days you can give uh, uh, identifying information of your own, and it'll show up on the uh, packaging material as soon as you see it. So indeed, this is the H9 through H12 evaluation stuff, some sample stuff, and and here they are, and the the stainless steel, the two grades, and the cheaper stuff, the zinc plated, uh, um, and. Here they are, uh, all compared. Uh, this one on the lower left is the original one that I preferred. This is actually a six millimeter uh, 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 shaft length, so it's longer than the other ones. But that, in fact, the six millimeters is a little bit too long for some of the purposes. Sometimes in some of the standoffs, it actually bottoms out before snugging up against the circuit board. So I wanted five millimeters. But this head, this nice little rounded head, this is the cheese head. This is the big old thing. And these were the three that came from the uh, Bolt Depot. These were called pan heads. And, and they're, they seem kind of somewhere in between. They're, they're not sort of flared out like the cheese head, but they're not all nice and tucked around. They really sort of have a side wall. Well, so I tried them out. Uh, so here's what the uh, the ones, the nice ones, the actual pan heads that came in that little kit that I got uh, a while ago look like in the board. Here, this is the beagle bone green mounted on the head's tile, the circuit board that I soldered up. This is the uh, the LCD, the the liquid crystal display uh, on top. Uh, um, and here's another corner of it, and you know, there's it, it's it's snug, but with the original ones, there there's clearance. Um, and here it is with uh, this is with the two uh, screws from the Bolt Depot order, one of the stainless steels ones, uh, um, and you know, it's thicker. Uh, um, here's what it looks like underneath the uh, LCD. Uh, um, I think it's probably all right, but. I wouldn't mind a little more clearance uh, um, and other side as well some of the sides don't matter at all yeah this one there's plenty of clearance here because uh, the four holes that go through the beagle bone to, to hold it down which is what these screws are doing are not in a strict rectangle so that two one sides further out than the other and so on uh, um, and and that guy he's got enough clearance um, I also discovered while I was doing this that you can actually kind of peek through the grill and, and see one of the uh, the screws uh, from the front, and you can actually peek through the east key, key slot for the uh, the to keep the 
intertile connectors going in the correct direction and see another one of them. So probably it's fine, but I only bought samples of these. I'm going to need uh, order 800 to 1,000 of these. I, I think I'd just like to keep looking uh, uh, for now. So that's the story. But bottom line, whoops, uh, uh, bottom line, uh, the so the panhead Phillips uh, screwdriver situation still not completely set. But again, we those are not soldered on. That does not block us from going to ETS. On the other hand, we have the P8 and P9, the two headers that mount the BeagleBone 2R circuit board that I finally ordered from uh, AliExpress. Uh, that was I did, the guys did not offer DHL, so I went with this e packet, which is free shipping, very scary. Uh, and then you know I ordered it, and it basically it didn't even ship. It was awaiting shipping, awaiting shipping. This processing time was seven days. It was ticking down. Finally, I sent them an email, and then five hours later, it shipped. Uh, um, and so now I'm trying to, you know, track it and see if it's actually getting anywhere. Uh, it goes through this, this EMS site, um, and it, it shows that it arrived at some sorting center and then, and then nothing, nothing happens for, for days after days. Uh, this particular uh, website has a very weird, uh, uh, capture that you need to do. It took me a while to figure out. Uh, it's a one-dimensional <laughs> capture where you have to grab this button and slide it over, and you're sliding a little puzzle piece to line up with the other puzzle piece. And this puzzle piece is always exactly the same. It's always light gray relative to its surround. I would assign this as a first task is to find the puzzle piece in the picture uh, for an image processing class. Uh, uh, so here I am, you know, I'm sliding this thing back and forth. I've almost got the puzzle piece lined up on this one. It's really silly. I can't believe it works at all. I, I, it seems like it's one of these sort of cargo cult captures that's supposed to make you think you did it one, but I mean, unless they're doing something about velocity of the thing, you, you slide the thing back and forth. I don't know. Eventually, I found out from Googling the number that, in fact, I could track it via USPS because I didn't get it that EMS is uh, using the, the national posts of the different companies. Com countries so it's in, in the china post when it's in china and then it gets handed off to usps when it gets here and indeed they gave me the same information <laughs> uh but it was a little less threatening and they didn't have any capture that i had to slide a puzzle piece on and then yesterday they arrived in la uh uh I was willing to believe it could have taken weeks to get to this point, but supposedly yesterday they arrived in LA and they're supposed to be here on Thursday. Those are the last parts that need to be soldered onto the board. We're going to be all willing, ready to go. All right. Uh, uh, so that means uh, our last bit of red in the stuff that needs to be here to manufacture these tiles uh, uh, is now going to be in place in a couple of days if all goes well. That's exciting. All right, so that's that. Uh, um, uh, the paper shipped, uh, the reviewing process takes about a month or something like that. Uh, I got my, uh, uh, my email from their automated email from EasyChair, the conference system that an awful lot of these conferences use. They received the paper. We're not going to pay attention to the time that it was 5.26 a.m. on Saturday, uh, even though it was supposed to be on Friday with the extension, but the place was still open. There we go. Uh, uh, all right, just about out of time. Next week, ready to build, payment methods ready to go, and maybe we could even have a schedule for when these things are going to get made. We'll see. <sighs> Thanks for watching.